and this is uh, what I do for my finished art. I um, I sketch it all out and then I put down an overlay of nice vellum and I redraw. So that's what I'm going to do now. Rubio Cruz, Rubio Cruz and Trump with their tongues tied. <coughs> And uh, that's just because they're throwing so much invective at each other, and it's a bunch of words, and it's all disgusting, and uh, that's basically all this cartoon is. This is going to be uh, something that'll run as a companion piece, I think, to uh, columns about uh, uh, all the war of words going on here. This is my rough sketch for this so uh, I'm still kind of close to that uh, sketch on a napkin is what I usually do go out to breakfast have a sketch on a napkin feral Jew boy says how are you very good today feral Jew boy nice to see you here please do uh, Follow me, I appreciate it. Oh, and thank you, uh, King J five nine seven seven, for following. I appreciate it. I I do need more followers. I'm just trying to get this going, and uh, and it can be slow. So thank you so much. Nice to have you here. Okay, just so that you know what I'm looking at, we're we're entering part two. This is video part two. This is Daryl draws the finished line art. Then there's going to be video part three, which is Daryl colors it in Photoshop. So three videos today, and you you just saw the first one where I'm doing this rough sketch. So there's uh, Trump. This is what I'm looking at from my photo sketch uh, scrap when I look at the the screen. Feral Jew boy writes, "I already follow you. I was here on one of your first streams, I think." Well, thank you much, Feral. Okay. Rubio. I'll put Rubio up on the screen. Let's start a Rubio because I'm left handed, you know, and I draw from uh, right to left. So we'll make that happen. It would be nice if I had a better way of seeing much and who is online but I'm not quite sophisticated enough to do that so I don't know how many people are online 15 I think on Twitch can't tell how many on YouTube so hey I need to uh, I need to get more followers Feral jo Jew Boy writes is this a commissioned piece I am a newspaper editorial cartoonist Feral Jew Boy, and I need to uh, draw a kind of a steady stream of uh, cartoons to feed to my subscribing newspapers. So this is just one of the uh, regular editorial cartoons that I just draw all the time as I please. But I do have to draw about what the topic is in the news and what the editors want, which right now is going to be election related stuff with uh, New Hampshire happening in a couple days and this is a pretty easy generic cartoon to go with uh, a lot of the columns that they're going to have right now about these three who seem to be taking all the air out of the room. Atomic Widget, nice to see you here. Please follow me if you haven't already. I 
I see these familiar faces. Well, no faces. Familiar uh, screen names from previous previous streams. So nice to see you coming back. Oh, you have followed already. Very good. I appreciate it. I'm short on followers, just getting getting going. But I improve a little bit each time, you know? The quality of these is uh, getting a little bit better as I figure out what the heck I'm doing. Feral Jew Boy writes, Do you have a favorite presidential candidate? Bernie Sanders has really caught my attention, although I'm not from America. Where are you from, Feral? Um, I've talked about it a few times here before, but I'll mention it again. If I had to vote for one of the Republicans now, I would vote for Trump. Because I don't think he's a religious nut that's going to want to jump into the next apo uh, the, the apocalypse and bring Jesus Christ back quicker. As I think Ted Cruz would... Kid Cruz kind of a scary character. You're from London. Ah, what is it about? Uh, midnight in London? 11 o'clock at night? I'm here in California. London is fun. London, Britain has just a wonderful cartooning tradition. It's past 10, 10 in the evening. Excellent time to be... Uh, Watching somebody draw a cartoon in California at 2.11 p.m. Pacific Time. Feral writes, I visited California in the summer, stayed for a while in Echo Park, L.A., and traveled around the West Coast. Very good. Douglas M. Granger writes, I followed your work on your website for years. You and Nate Beeler are my favorites. I'm very happy you're doing these live series now. I've already learned a lot. Very nice. Thank you, Douglas. And uh, please do uh, follow my uh, my stream. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm hurting for followers. So uh, if you would add yourself, I would much appreciate it. It is unusual for me to draw such big heads. And to do this kind of crosshatchy stuff in the faces. Oh, thank you, Douglas. You just followed me. I appreciate it. Theo writes, very awesome to see Kegel.com fans on Twitch. Yeah, that it is. This is quite a different uh, 
beast than kegel.com because um, you know people come to kegel.com and just look at cartoons I don't know that uh, they're committed to uh, sitting and watching you draw which is more of a how-to thing I think we get more uh, artists interested in the how-to aspect of uh, the drawing when they watch a video rather than people casually looking for for uh, for a laugh at a cartoon So the way I'm drawing this is kind of a departure from uh, the way you see me usually draw. Um, if you would, I would much appreciate it if you could uh, also post something f on your uh, Facebook or your Twitter or something. Help me draw some more people in. Because we're just not getting enough people watching Twitch. And I think the jury is still out on whether it's uh, it's viable for uh, editorial cartoonists to, to do this kind of streaming. Douglas writes, Now for a technical question. You use such a heavy pencil line. Do you even ink the drawing with pen before scanning, and why use TIFF files specifically? I've done both traditional, only all digital, and a hybrid approach like you, coloring in Photoshop, and I'm still trying to find my preferred method. Um, no, I don't ink them. The process of drawing now is my inking, because I don't, uh, I don't do light gray pencil lines. As you can see, I draw hard, so every line is intended to be picked up as a line. So it works uh, as ink. People think I draw in ink. And uh, that's good. I look forward to uh, deceiving them. There's his eyeball. Okay, I think that's looking like Rubio. The reason you use TIFF files is that uh, TIFF is not a lossy format. If you uh, save something in TIFF, you are saving exactly where every pixel is without uh, allowing the the computer to decide which of your lines and which of your colors it wants to screw with. Feral writes, be right back, Daryl. I have a couple of Spanish assignments to do. I'm trying to learn Spanish and try to learn a few new phrases and conjunctions each day. I'll definitely share out your stream on the social media. Thank you much, Feral. I appreciate it. Anyway, um, so yeah, TIFF is good. TIFF is also bigger. You get smaller files when you save in JPEG. And um, sometimes they end up too big and I end up saving it as JPEG, but I keep a copy for myself as a TIFF in case I want to resize or doing something with it. Anyway, folks, do please share info on the stream with your buddies and uh, help me make this work. And uh, thank you again for following, Douglas. You are my most recent follower. OK, 
Okay, there's Marco. Let's try Ted. Then I'll draw the tongues between Ted and Marco. And just in case you're only now stepping in, this is what I'm uh, looking at on the monitor in front of me. And this is uh, this is Google Images, and this is how everybody does uh, caricatures these days. You bring them all up as a group, which is uh, a lot more efficient and easier than it used to be in the old days, where we had to save clippings. It's hard to imagine old days like that. It's like the cavemen used to collect clippings. When I was uh, 21, starting off as a cartoon illustrator in New York, I used to take the subway to the 42nd Street uh, Library. 42nd Street, 5th Avenue, and about 40th Street, New York Public Library. And uh, they had a a photo scrap room with, filled with newspaper and magazine clippings that were organized like uh, like Google Images. You could look up somebody in there and then you could check out the clippings and do your illustration. I spent a lot of time in the library New York Public Library. I trust that they don't have that clippings room anymore. But uh, the old days were uh, quite archaic. Clippings at the library. Flipping through some alternative cruises. Alternative cruises. I'm not sure I've got my cruise right. Actually, his nose has a kind of very different character from front to side view. Douglas writes, if you could give one piece of advice to an aspiring editorial cartoonist in his 20s who wants to make a full-time career in the profession, what would it be? Are newspaper jobs hopeless? Um, I think the days of uh, em a real employee kind of job in a newspaper are hopeless. Those days are gone, but... Uh, you know, editorial cartoons are still as popular as ever among readers. You know, kids in school study them in social studies class. Um, they're reprinted everywhere. We've got a bigger audience than ever. We're still part of the national debate. I can't imagine doing anything else. But I don't harbor any hope in my future for getting an employee job with a newspaper. So I would like to do things like develop a new audience on Twitch, look for some kind of alternative scheme. Uh, what most people do is they find a couple of small clients and then they do the syndication on the side. And pretty soon all the 
editorial cartoonists are going to be freelancers, I think. But that's okay. Find a way to make it work. Maybe I'll get an audience on Twitch. Different kind of audience. Victoria Seven writes, What did make you want to become a cartoonist? You know, I started off thinking I wanted to be a general illustrator back in the late 70s. And I studied under <coughs> a Danish illustrator who um, did uh, romance. And uh, I did some romance stuff. But I picked up the Muppets as a client, I think 1978, when I moved to Manhattan to be an uh, illustrator, thinking I might do romance. And then I started drawing Muppets cartoons all the time, and I started doing a bunch of work for Scholastic and book publishers and stuff. And, uh, you know, the cartooning just uh, ended up being what I did. Stream working okay, Theo? I do notice that it's uh, got a spinning wheel over here. But uh, OBS looks like it's working for me. I think things are working. Did we stall out? Ah, yeah, it's working. Wants to run another commercial. So is Ted Cruz looking Ted Cruzy enough? You know, the bottom of his nose is absolutely flat. It comes way down. Anyway, once you've been an editorial cartoonist, there's no going back to drawing other people's characters. I love drawing what I want about the news, and I love that I get a nice big audience for it. The business aspect of this, along with any other art, is up in the air. Who knows what happens next? So you try stuff. You try uh, try drawing on Twitch. Let's see if that's more interesting. So I try different stuff. I'm trying this. We'll see if this works. I'm enjoying it. I think it's kind of scary. I'm guessing that uh, uh, it would be a tough sell to a lot of cartoonists. That nose looks pretty lousy. Got to rethink that. His nose looks very different from what you think it's going to look like on the side. Funky Monkey, hey, thank you for subscribe uh, for following Funky Monkey. I appreciate it. I think the nose has to come down way farther. Funky monkey. This is uh, this is what I'm staring at, and uh, you can see that I'm not getting a good side angle on his nose, and I'm not sure that uh, there's a lot of value in these particular images that I'm getting.
This is about the best I can get for the side of his nose. The nose is so, uh... Well, there's a side of a nose. Not much going on with that. But it does come down that way. It's got it's got a great big round nasal wing. That is a nasal wing. Does that and. That. Does that look like him? It does not. Nose needs to come farther out, doesn't it? Oops, sorry. Switch scenes. Thank you, Theo. Yes, of course. I need to switch scenes. Yes, I was a cartoonist for the Muppets all through the 80s. When they were having their high-flying days and uh, Jim Henson was still there. Jim Henson made my career for me. by uh, Just by liking my cartoons and keeping me busy with uh, Muppet work for 15 years. Okay. Does that look like his nose? It does not. I'm going to have to do something radically different from the way I think his nose actually is at this angle because there's a feeling to his nose that is different from the way that it particularly is. Vinfernalis, nice to see you here. Please do remember to uh, follow me. I appreciate that. Thank you for following me, Funky Monkey. Yes, I worked with the Muppets for 15 years. Yeah, I'm just redrawing the same thing. Yeah, I've got a Wikipedia page, but you know I've also got a Muppet Wiki page. Go to the Muppet Wiki. what the side of his nose would do better than nothing I need to pull his upper lip back don't I the nose needs to go with the lip actually it comes down farther okay suppose that Part of the problem with the nose was that the mouth that went with the nose wasn't uh, wasn't good because that looks much more like Ted Cruz than it did with the mouth on it. So you like my controversial Mexican flag cartoon, huh, Funky Monkey? Boy, uh. CNN tried to do a number on me on that. All right, let's pull this upper lip back like that. Because that's kind of what his upper lip does, huh? Vin for Nails writes, I don't know if it's just me, but the audio is cutting in and out. I can see you're talking, but can't always hear you. Hmm. Well, 
Uh, looks like it's registering. Anybody else having audio problems? I do have it threshold set though that uh, when I'm not saying anything, it turns the sound off. Yeah, same thing there too. What do you think, Theo? Should I turn off the threshold on the microphone? Let uh, let it hiss all the time. I can do it. Douglas, is there a way to go back in the video and watch a part we missed, not the live stream? Yes, I think this is set um, so that you can go back. Um, I know it does on uh, YouTube. I'm I'm uh, simulcasting to YouTube. Go to YouTube and search Daryl Cagle. And I think that you can set it to go from uh, previous streams. Yes, Theo. Oh, so why did I decide to do that meeting the Mexican flag cartoon? That was because there was a a terrible um, massacre in northern Mexico of uh, about 90 people from evil drug lords and uh, the, the violence in Mexico is terrible so it was a cartoon about the violence in Mexico But uh, Funky Monkey, the first part of this uh, drawing, the, the rough sketch, is um, a separate video. And that may have, uh, may still be processing, may have finished. He has some funky details in his nose. That's not looking very good, is it? That nose is a little funnier. So, Vin for Nails, you had to restart uh, Twitch. I, I had gotten a, a freeze in this little... Uh, I've got my laptop going off to my right. Sometimes you see I look to the right to see what's happening on the laptop. And it had frozen too. Oh, thank you for following Undead Nemesis. I appreciate it.
Theo writes, Fitch has been finicky today, not just the stream. Are you watching other streams at the same time, Theo? I have trouble keeping up with just my own stream. One of the things on my list of uh, next things to figure out as I try to tackle a little bit more each day that I do the streaming is uh, hosting other people's streams, which I have not quite uh, figured out yet. But that seems like the polite thing to do. But there's, uh, you know, there's a learning curve to this stuff. I am getting better. Clueless Mail writes, I am three monitors. Need to keep them all filled. <laughs> well, good. I don't think anybody's watching YouTube. I think I'm the only editorial cartoonist who has ever tried the live streaming. And uh, I would love to watch other editorial cartoonists online. Vin for Nails writes, hosting is nice. It helps you to get to know other streamers too. Maybe you guys could suggest uh, other streamers that have the kind of, uh, uh, that are kind of in the same ballpark of the kind of stuff that I do. That would be good for me to host when I sign off from these. And I will uh, venture to give that a try. Douglas M. Granger writes, Is it possible to get accepted to a syndicate even if you are only self-published? I recently submitted to Creators and Universal Uclick. I would have submitted to Kegel.com, but I don't think unsolicited cartoonists are allowed to do so. Well, you know, syndication doesn't pay very much. And, uh, well, but on the other hand, it's where most of your cartoons get seen. So if you want to have uh, some impact on the public debate, you have that impact through the syndication. Syndication meaning uh, a business like my little business or creators or universal or washington post or tribune content agency or king features they have uh, packages of cartoonists that they send out to newspapers who subscribe to the packages But newspapers pay very little for these subscription packages. And it's something that a cartoonist should only do as a secondary thing after they've got a reason to be drawing the cartoons already for a given client. So what happens is syndicates get burned by people who, who uh, write to them and want to be syndicated, but if they don't have a newspaper or some reason to be doing it every day anyway, and show that they've been doing it every day for quite a while anyway, then the syndicate knows that they're going to join up, not get paid enough, quit, and be angry, and make the syndicate look like jerks because they promoted uh, adding a new guy who just quits right away. So... They've been burned enough times that uh, someone who is uh, not having that kind of uh, uh, a gig is um, at quite a disadvantage to try to get a syndicate to pick them up. And the syndicates, of course, are not 
looking for new cartoonists because the newspapers aren't asking for more cartoonists. They've already got more cartoonists than they can use. So um, the way to think about getting into editorial cartoons is different. Think about what can you do that creates a reason for you to draw a cartoon every day and uh, lets you make a living doing something other than syndication so that you can have syndication for your voice but um, uh, make your living uh, in some more reasonable way, which is what the syndicates are looking for. In addition to your being absolutely great, fantastic, as good as the other guys they syndicate. So Cruz is there. Is he looking cruisy enough? I'm not sure. I think I'm going to need to... Uh, Draw on something else for a little bit. King Grimm is a cartoonist, says Vin for Nails. All right. And two senseless. I'll take a look. I have to, uh, I have to figure hosting out. But thank you for the suggestions. Um. So, Theo, do you think I should turn off the threshold on the microphone? People seem to think that when it turns off, they're missing me saying something. If that's disturbing, then they can listen to some hiss. And I won't cu cut off. Tell me what you think easy enough to turn that off if it's something that doesn't work. So think of uh, editorial cartooning like uh, being a professional athlete or a dancer or an actor or a musician. There's a lot of people who want to do it, not a lot of people who make a living at it. And uh, it's not cutting out. It's sounding okay to you, Theo? Do you hear what the other people were complaining about? Anyway, likewise, it's hard to be an actor or a musician or a dancer or a professional athlete. And much like actors, musicians, dancers, and athletes, you can make, uh, oh, thank you, Vin for Nails. Nice to know that the audio is good. Um, people ask me, how much money can you make as a cartoonist? I say you can make anywhere between $0 a year and $50 million a year much like an actor or a musician. Charles Schultz made $50 million in a year. But you are much more likely to make $0 than you are to make $50 million. Thank you, Vittoria7. Okay, does that look enough like Ted Cruz for you to know who he is? I don't quite have an answer to that.
case you're wondering, I've got a piece of sandpaper over here on my right that I'm making a little chisel point on the pencils when I grab them. Yeah, I have uh, ambient noise in here, so I set the threshold on the, the microphone. And of course, I'm not wearing earphones, and I'm not hearing any of the sound. I notice a lot of guys on these streams playing music, which I, w I would not care about for having music in the stream, but I can see how that would uh, cover up, s uh, excuse me, cover up some uh, shortcomings in background noise. I get the sound of the, the fan in my computer. See you later, Theo. Come back. Help me out again. Theo, who just left us, PSI Matrix, is my uh, tech guru who makes everything work on Kegel.com and in our syndicate. He's been giving me Twitch lessons. And I'm starting to get there. Improve a little bit each time. I've got a little bit more bells and whistles each time that I go along. I think this, um, the idea of the live streams is great fun. And uh, I'm very impressed when I look at uh, Twitch Creative and see how big an audience some of those guys have. My goodness, huge audience. Yeah, Funky Monkey writes. What do you think about digital drawing streams, etc.? Would you ever swap to digital, or do you already do it? Um, well, I color this in Photoshop, so the next uh, thing that I do after I finish this line art will be I'll scan it, and then I'm going to do another stream where you can watch me color it. So uh, I do a lot of digital. And you can spend... Uh, Another hour and a half after I finish this watching me do Photoshop. But uh, the actual drawing part, I like having original art. You know, this is going to be a nice piece of original art. This, uh, this vellum that I draw on, it looks nice. It's white paper. shows up gray here, but it's nice white paper. And... Uh, 
It looks great as a framed original. And I do sell some originals. And I don't like the idea of uh, giving up on original art. I also have not been real happy with the way my work tends to look when I'm drawing on the Wacom tablet. And I notice when other artists convert from doing their, most people use ink, but uh, doing their, their art on paper to art all drawn on the Wacom tablet, that it loses some of its character. Now there are some guys who draw on the Wacom tablet and you'd never know never know they did but uh, by and large I think I see a lot of uh, people rushing through their drawings on the Wacom tablet they do it so that they can be faster so what I notice when I see an artist who has switched from paper to Wacom tablet is you get you get them not paying much attention to the thicks and thins of lines. You see a lot less cross hatching and you see um, uh, quickness and simplicity to what they do whereas before it may have been richer. And I think that a lot of people do it just because of the, the idea that they can uh, get it done faster and they're worried about their deadlines and their income but uh, I do rely on the Wacom tablet I, I used to paint and I don't paint anymore now all I do is line art and uh, color it in Photoshop because painting has just kind of become impractical. People want you to send them an electronic file when you're done. And you want to prepare the file so that it looks good in print. I know some guys that still paint. Some that paint their editorial cartoons. They paint it small so that fits in the scanner. They're used to doing it. Alright, but uh, I think the finished product in most cases would have looked better had they colored it in Photoshop. Where I can keep my black lines on the separate channel and keep them nice and crispy. But, of course, you can do your stuff any way you want, as long as it looks good. Long answer to a short question that didn't really uh, provide much information, huh? So, yes, I use a Wacom tablet, and I rely on it, and I will color this on the Wacom tablet after I finish this line art. Funky Monkey writes, what's the cartoon you're most proud of and why? Most proud of? I haven't quite thought about that. I don't think I have an answer for you. I have to put some thought into it. Look at some old cartoons and figure out an answer. I'm usually just so focused on today. So, is Ted Cruz looking any better? 
I'm not sure he is. I'm still thinking about him as I'm drawing these tongues. Undead Nemesis, thank you for subscribe for following. I need to remember to say follow instead of subscribe. Since those have very different meanings on Twitch. So I think the people that draw on the Wacom tablet are the guys who are really fast and don't uh, don't really put as much into the cross hatching rendering kind of mindset where I still live. And it is nice to have original art. And I do sell it every so often. Funky Monkey writes, are you drawing this for publication or just pleasure drawing? My work is syndicated to just about 850 newspapers, which includes um, just about half of America's daily paid circulation newspapers. And this is one of my regular cartoons for syndication. You can see my work at um, DarylKagel.com. So since I'm probably, it's 3 o'clock, so 6 o'clock in New York, East Coast papers have closed for the weekend. I'm not going to finish this until probably 6 o'clock Pacific time. So uh, the newspapers don't come back to work until Monday morning. They put their uh, Sunday papers to bed on Friday. So this is going to be too late for Sunday. They're going to be looking at it for the first time Monday morning when, uh, I guess, what is the, is New Hampshire vote on Monday? Monkey Monkey writes, what does syndication mean? Syndication is, uh, tell you what, go to kegelworld.com, C-A-G-L-E-W-O-R-L-D.com, and you'll see it explained for, uh, new potential syndication customers. But that's how newspapers get their cartoons. They get their cartoons from package services where multiple cartoonists deliver their cartoons efficiently to the editors. Newspapers are all really cheap and in trouble, so they don't pay very much for the cartoons. And so they typically do not work with individual cartoonists. They prefer to buy only from these cheap services of multiple cartoonists. That's why I say I have so many papers, because they subscribe to the whole package of cartoonists of which I am a part.
So when I say I have 850 subscribing papers, what I mean is my Kegel Cartoons group of cartoonists, me included, has 850 subscribers. So they can all make the same claim, everybody else in my group. So since there's no rush on this, um, nobody's going to print it until, nobody's even going to look at it until Monday. I could put off doing the color and do it as another stream, maybe Saturday or Sunday. See how long this takes me. So you wonder how newspapers get their co editorial cartoons. They subscribe to a service like ours. Look at kegelworld.com. You can then go to our newspaper site, kegelcartoons.com. See what the editors see every day, which is uh, like a real-time news ticker from cartoonists around the world. Cartoon news ticker. And they look at what's available to them each day, and they make their picks based on their uh, editorial prejudices. Which tend to be that editors like to pick things that uh, don't offend people. Which is very frustrating for cartoonists, because cartoonists like to draw strong cartoons. Perhaps we want to offend people. We have to get it through those editor gatekeepers who don't want the little old ladies to cancel their subscription to the newspaper because they saw a rude cartoon. So that is uh, an ongoing frustration for cartoonists. Anyway, I'm thinking as this gets later in the afternoon that perhaps I will do my uh, coloring stream tomorrow. Since there's no rush for this, the papers have already gone to bed. Sandpaper over here is getting pretty messy. Mm, okay, the Donald. I'm going to draw on Donald for a little bit. Not too happy with Ted. Happy with Marco. So the Donald, and again, this is what I'm looking at over here. Looking at many Donalds. The problem is they're all head-on, and here I am drawing a three-quarter view.
clueless male writes, look at the nose and you can tell who it is. Oh, good. Maybe I get too close to these things. Clueless mail, please uh, follow me. I need the follows. I would appreciate it. Yes, if you're wondering about syndication, how this gets published, and what these uh, syndication services look like, go to the kegelworld.com site. That's uh, the site that explains my own syndication service. You can uh, see how it works. can't just trace what I've done before. I really have to treat that as a, a suggestion. Another thing you can do as a cartoonist that uh, the aspiring cartoonists tend not to think much about is when you keep your light source in mind, light source is up here, see the shadows are on the far from the light source side, um, you can deal with that light source by just making the lines thicker away from the light source rather than necessarily uh, having to do shading. So, you know, thicker under his nose, thicker, thicker, thicker on the bottom side of this tongue. Oop. They are a grouchy bunch. No more comments, folks. You going quiet? Sometimes I run into uh, Clueless Mail looking at my other artwork online. Very good. <sighs> um, sometimes as I try to talk like mumbling Popeye all the time, since when I watch these things on, on Twitch, I want to hear people talk rather than just work silently and it's more natural to work silently um, 
but uh, every so often as I'm drawing, I notice that uh, something I'm drawing requires part of my brain that I'm using to talk, and they're mutually exclusive. I do have a illustration portfolio posted. If you go to behance.net slash Daryl Cagle, all, uh, all one word, Daryl Cagle, then, uh, uh, then you can see my uh, illustration portfolio. Vivi Corsi writes, I'm new to Twitch and don't know much about it. What tools do you need to broadcast on Twitch? Well, uh, quite a few tools. There are lots of YouTube videos on how to do it. The problem is that Twitch is all about gamers, and the new um, creative community is new. And crea creative community people tend to be on Macs, and gamers tend to be on PCs. And a lot of these tools and advice and things are very much geared to the PC community. So trying to figure things out as a non-techie artist working on a Mac can be challenging. And a lot of the tools work only on PCs or uh, have, um, have corresponding Mac versions that don't work as well as the PC versions do. So I think if you're a, a gamer, the standard uh, standard Twitch broadcaster, things are a bit easier. But uh, here I am on a Mac and I've managed to make it work. And I know I'm not the only one. But uh, I'm still in my learning curve and still adding little bells and whistles as I go along. Wow, 13 people have followed today. That's great. So I think I'm not quite at the point where I want to step up and say, this is how you do it, because... I haven't yet entirely figured it out. But uh, if you look back at my old um, streams, you can see I'm much better at it than I was in the beginning a couple months ago. It's an acquired skill. I've also gotten a little bit better about uh, this um, Popeye-like mumbling. I say is drawing his squinty eye required the part of my brain that is devoted to mumbling. But it is uh, certainly a very different audience than I get on Kegel.com for um, people who want to browse the cartoons. This is much more an audience of uh, aspiring artists and people that are more interested in the drawing process than, uh, than bitching about politics, which is interesting, refreshing, not what I'm used to seeing in my email box. Of course, he says, I see two different angles, so I suppose you have two cameras. Yes, I have a face camera 
and uh, looking straight down at the drawing board camera. Victoria7 writes, What made you want to start streaming, Daryl? Hey, you gotta try new stuff. You know, Twitch only started their creative community last October, and the live streaming on YouTube is still in beta. Um, and uh, I look at the creative community on Twitch, and I see some guys with nice big audiences, and I thought, you know, if this works, it would be cool. And uh, I'm brave. I'll let you see all my mistakes. See how I don't know what I'm going to draw next, and I equivocate, and I erase a lot. I think a lot of artists are going to be afraid to show you that. But it's fun, you know. If I, uh, if I, uh, if I get this working right, once I've got it figured out, um, I've got to spend the time doing my drawings anyway. So presumably, um, streaming doing the drawing shouldn't be taking me any longer than my work already takes anyway. So I'm getting a new product and a new audience and a new uh, a new home um, while I'm not actually uh, doing anything different than the same work I was already doing. And it shouldn't be taking me any longer. Victoria 7 says, it's out of my comfort zone, but it's been fun. I also like the company since I work from home. Well, good. You know, that's also true. Cartoonists uh, work at home in isolation, and uh, I don't see people that much. So it would be nice to have some... Uh, Some fans join me regularly for uh, for all of this, so I'm I'm hopeful about it. If I could get a big enough audience, then perhaps this is an alternative to having a newspaper, huh? So I'm hopeful and see what happens, and uh, you never know unless you try it. So here I go. All right, chump's hair. Yeah, it is inspiring to watch a lot of these people on the Twitch creative community. And, uh, you know, the way you really learn as an artist is to sit and watch somebody else work. That's how I did it in the old days. I studied with an illustrator to do my uh, romance book covers. And... Uh, you want to have a, a class with a teacher that sits there for the whole time while you're painting and uh, comes up and makes changes on your work. Funky Monkey writes, who, who are the three people you're drawing? I know one is Donald Trump, but I'm in the UK, so dong, no American politics. This is Marco Rubio, and this is Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz just these are the top three finishers in the Iowa caucuses earlier this week. And they have emerged as essentially the main competitive uh, Republican candidates. And so they've taken to, um, 
they've taken to um, attacking each other and that is most of what the the talk is now so that's basically this they're all attacking each other and they're tongue-tied and that's what the whole conversation's about Viv, of course, he writes, I like your website, Kegel.com. I'm a fan of it for 16 years now. Wow, well, that's great. Thank you, Viv, of course. And it's interesting, Trump, Trump gets the international attention more than uh, the others like Cruz and Rubio. But... Um, Cruz and Rubio are worse. Cruz is by far the worst. So that's going to need to crop here. No problem, Funky Monkey. I would, uh, I, I don't know my British politicians. Trump's hair is so wispy. Oh, thank you for following, Bogey Dark. I appreciate it. Oh, we've got 14 new followers today. That's great. So I saw one guy the other day. He had 2,500 people watching his stream on Twitch drawing character design. And, uh, you know, there's a potential there. I don't quite know how to reach him. Welcome back, Feral Jew Boy. Sketch 4565, what paper size paper are you drawing on? This is 14 by 17. Fural writes, I guess building a Twitch following is all about consistency. Yeah, and you know, one thing I haven't done is put up a, a schedule of when I'm going to be drawing. Because I hate to change my lifestyle to commit to doing drawings at particular times. And I realize I need to do that. That's going to be one of these next uh, next uh, improvements to how I do Twitch that must be upcoming. I know it, but that's a painful one to have to do. Oh, Amp Reaction. Thank you for um for for following Amp Reaction. I appreciate it. We've got 15 new people today. Six more and I'll have 100 followers. That's very exciting. That's a milestone. Okay. Yes, the paper is 14 by 17, but I'm not drawing that big on the paper today. Next question is, do I want to draw a border around it? This is kind of a complicated one. Maybe I do. 
having a border around it uh, anchors it, makes it simpler. These are all things that I have not uh, considered until I get into this and figure it out as I'm drawing it. It's rare for me to draw borders around cartoons. I tend not to like borders. Quirrell writes, I guess if you wanted to bypass consistency, you called always created a gimmick. That usually draws people in. Hmm. Always create a gimmick. What what gimmick would you uh, suggest, Feral? Not sure I like all that stuff on Donald's cheek. Works more on Rubio. All right, I'm going to need muck going on in the background. Let's try that. Feral writes, well, I would never suggest using gimmicks to pull in crowds, but other Twitch people use things like giveaways to draw people in. Giveaways. Do they do that in Twitch creative, or is that more what you expect to see from the gamers? I have trouble looking at Twitch Twitch creative and thinking um, which guys are most like what I do because there's you know there's people uh, people drawing manga people bedazzling their sweaters I'm not quite sure what relates Viv of course he writes how much time do you usually spend on a cartoon um, Usually uh, most of the day. Victoria writes, yes, they do. Feral writes, yeah, lots of Twitch creative people do stuff like that. Well, I'm still in my learning curve, folks. Look at me doing a border. Victoria7 writes, I know a creative streamer who does giveaways and raffles.
So how do you uh, promote your giveaway or raffle to the people that are not subscribed to you already? Oh, and thank you, thank you, Amp Reaction. We've got uh, 15 today. I'm five short of 100. Getting 100 followers would be a nice milestone. You can promote it on social media. Yeah. Who's my favorite character to draw? Uh, Vivi Corsi writes, I think the best editorial cartoon character is still Hillary. Hillary is a wonderful character because people all know her. You can do the character humor kind of stuff with her because you know all the stories, so you can put her in a situation where she's going to do what you expect her to do, and then people doing what they what you expect them to do is uh, half of what all comedy is. Clueless Mail writes, stream regularly like around the same time helps. I know I watch a, pe a lot of people when I'm working from home. Yeah, I need to force myself to keep to a schedule. Let's see, I can crop closer in at the bottom, huh? Let's try here. That's probably better. Better cropped, huh? Vivi Corsi, I'm in Santa Barbara, California, and I live in both Santa Barbara and Nashville, Tennessee, where my wife teaches at Vanderbilt. So uh, I gotta go to Tennessee every so often, but here I'm in Santa Barbara. And Santa Barbara is my hometown. I went to uh, UC Santa Barbara and Santa Barbara City College. Where are you from, Vivi Corsi? Innsbruck, Austria. Well, that's pretty cool.
There's some very good Austrian cartoonists. Two of our uh, most popular international cartoonists live um, live in Vienna. Um, Pitar Pismetrovich. Ah, and um, Marian Kamensky. There's a fascinating cartoonist that you can see on Kegel.com named Rachel Gold, also from uh, from um, Vienna. And Rachel Gold is. Uh, male cartoonist pretending to be a female cartoonist cartoonist named martin siskiewicz who also draws under his own name but has created this character rachel gold who is actually quite popular he even draws in a different style for her and uh He's come up with a backstory for her. She's Jewish. She immigrated to Austria from Israel. And uh, he's convinced that there's enough um, residual uh, World War II guilt that just the fact that she's a Jewish woman cartoonist from Israel makes her better received in Austria, which seems kind of kind of crazy. But uh, you want to see uh, a cartoonist who just uh, boldly uh, pretends to be what he is not. Go take a look at Rachel Gold, cartoonist from Austria on uh, Kegel.com, Kegel among our international cartoonists. I think she's fascinating. Feral writes, Daryl, I recently started an online marketing course and have been doing quite a bit of research in that area. If you want, I could message you next week with a few ways I think you could promote, market, and grow your Twitch channel. Let me know. It would be my pleasure to help. I appreciate that, Feral. Sure, I, I, I need some ideas. You can email me at daryl at kegel.com, D-A-R-Y-L at uh, C-A-G-L-E.com. Remind me that you are a feral Jew boy and that we had this conversation. Keep in mind that my audience tends to be uh, the old people who read newspapers. And my email box is uh, a horror to behold. So I'm, I have a reputation of being uh, unresponsive and like I don't uh, pay attention when you email me. Well, that's because my email is a monster and I get a bunch of crap all the time. From people who read newspapers, old people who don't go on Twitch. Who are angry. So when cartoonists get together and have a beer very often the conversation turns on over to uh, if only I was somebody else I'll bet my cartoons would sell better but uh, Martin Siskiewicz in Austria is the only cartoonist I know who actually took that idea and ran with it he even uh, fooled his own editors. The secret is out now, but for a while nobody knew that Rachel Gold was not Rachel Gold. For 
for many years, actually. So, the rough sketch for this took an hour and a half, and I've been drawing an hour and 43 minutes on the finish, which sounds like about what I predicted. This is kind of a one that I would expect to take a long time. More involved than the typical editorial cartoon. Feral writes, uh, Daryl, I have to go now. I've got to get up early. Got an appointment to get my bicycle fixed. I will hopefully catch a stream soon, and I'll send you some marketing ideas for your email. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here, Feral. Oh, we got a new um, follower. Cranky You. Thank you so much, Cranky You. I appreciate it. Thank you for following. Now I've only I only need four more four more to get to uh, 100. Somebody calls me on the phone. Enough of that. Poco Loco britches. Well, Poco Loco, it's time for me to uh, re-explain what I'm doing here. So this is uh, Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, and Marco Rubio with their tongues tied. Here, their tongues are tied. This is my regular editorial cartoon. And it uh, will go out to newspapers probably on Monday to be reprinted on Tuesday, which will be after the, likely after the New Hampshire primary that people even be seeing this one. But it seems like the Republican race has boiled down to these three who are now spending a good deal of their time tongue lashing one another so that's the reason for this cartoon this is just uh just an illustration cartoon it's going to go with the general uh these these three bastards had enough of them kind of uh articles ted marco and the donald wordless cartoon just a visual metaphor tongue-tied Nothing more to it than that. So thank you again, Cranky You. Yeah, 96 followers, that's great. See if we can get it over a hundred before I'm done with this. It can be done pretty soon. I could sit here and color it. What time is it? Ten minutes to four. Maybe I will. I need to take about 
a 15 minute scanning break to get this into Photoshop before I color. I'm not sure I like this uh, crosshatch on the Donald. Monkey Monkey writes, what kind of scanner do you use? I buy cheap scanner. I think it was $80 at Walmart. It's a Canon scanner. He's looking better without crosshatch, isn't he? You know, I've got that space there. I can put my signature in his face or I can put it underneath. I'd love to go to Lisbon. Never been to Lisbon. A lot of people expect me to hide things in the crosshatching, people's names, secret messages, and I don't. He needs something going on in this big empty cheek. I need to figure out what that will be. Maybe it's just that the crosshatch needed to go in the other direction, huh? Let's try that. I draw with a very hard pencil, which is why uh, I can move my hand through it and not make a big smeary mess. better. I was uh, cross-hatching in the wrong direction, which looked disturbing. This is the direction I committed to on the other side of his face. All right, the rectangle is, uh, you can't quite tell because of the way the camera works. The rectangle isn't quite square, so I will correct that in Photoshop, and it will be square.
Of course, he writes, Daryl, it's impressive how much work there is in one cartoon. People seem to think that cartoons should be done really, really quickly. And frankly, I've, uh, I've spent three and a half hours on this one from, from start to where it's just about finished now. I don't consider that three and a half hours is that much. Wouldn't you like to think that when you're looking in the newspaper at a cartoon that somebody spent an afternoon on it at least? Some cartoonists like to brag about how fast they draw. And I think that's kind of counterproductive because you want people to think you worked hard on something for a long time. Megan Kelly Beauty Mole. Does she have a beauty mole? I, I don't remember that. Blank spots just want to be filled up, don't they? Yeah, I guess Megan Kelly is Donald Trump's beauty spot. Pretty close to being done. Of course, he writes, I'm drawing cartoons too. It takes me about three to five hours, but seeing how much work you put into the details, I have to reconsider my drawing process. Well, details are good. Now I sign it with DarylKagel.com because I'm also going to put PoliticalCartoons.com in here. If you haven't looked at PoliticalCartoons.com, you should go look. It's my e-commerce site, my, my online store. Um, anyway, putting two URLs in your cartoon is kind of pushing it with editors. But I get away with it with my signature. It is interesting that the Twitch audience is very much uh, a how-to audience of uh, like-minded uh, artists rather than people who want to argue about politics, which is what my email 
tends to be full of. And what I think most visitors to uh, Kegel.com are about. I don't think Kegel.com gets a how-to audience or audience of uh, people that are interested in the how-to-draw aspect of it. So, uh, Twitch is really something very new. I like the creative community on Twitch. I would like to see this work. I'm hoping that I'm going to be something of a trailblazer among the editorial cartoonists. It would be lovely to um, have, a, have a few windows open on the desktop all the time, looking at the desks, uh, looking at the, the drawing boards of my colleagues. I would enjoy that. And, uh, you know, this creative community on Twitch is really very new. I think, I still think my uh, cruise is weak. Vivek Corsi writes, do you choose the cartoonists on your website and do you sometimes dismiss them? Yes. That's a simple question. Pretty rare to dismiss one though. I do get people e emailing me demanding that I get rid of cartoonists who offend them. Well, now the question is, am I done? I think as I approach, as I just hit two hours here on doing the final, I think I am done. So, what I'm going to do here, folks, is I think I'm going to put off doing the color until tomorrow um just because it's after four and i may be sitting here another uh hour and a half with the color yeah i think i'm i think i'm good here Not happy with Cruz, but uh, I think Trump and Ruby are looking right. Okay. We have, of course, he writes, what are the reasons to dismiss someone? What is the reason that Mike Lester is no longer part of your site? Well, I used to syndicate Mike Lester, but then uh, Mike Lester moved to the Washington Post Writers Group, which uh, doesn't allow their cartoonists to post on Kegel.com. So uh, Mike switched... Uh, Switch syndicates in a quest for uh, greater syndication glory. 
which I don't think I don't think you achieve by moving away from Kegel cartoons. So Mike is missed. You can find him on uh, Go Comics, which we do not participate in. Okay, I am through. This is the final drawing. I'm going to uh, scan it and color it tomorrow. And you folks are all welcome to uh, join me again. One of these days I'm going to uh, put up a, a schedule. Um, I have not quite taken that big lifestyle leap yet, but I realize that I have to. So uh, before too long you'll see a schedule. I'll probably be drawing Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday probably at about noon or one o'clock uh, on an ongoing basis, maybe starting later next week. And uh, I may start doing some uh, some advertising or illustration work um, in addition to the editorial cartoons in the stream. So uh, we'll see how it evolves. I'm getting, uh, getting more comfortable with it, getting a little more comfortable with uh, talking to myself all the time like some nutty... Uh, hobo on the street in Santa Monica, but, uh, hey, that's what it takes. So, uh, thank you folks. Let me, uh, say goodbye. Oh, 16, uh, new, new followers today, which is, uh, wonderful. And, uh, I appreciate all of your being here and come back next time. And I should be, uh, still doing this regularly you can follow me on uh, political cartoons dot follow me on follow me on my facebook page facebook.com slash political cartoons thank you uh clueless mail i'll see you guys soon goodbye everybody and i